there's a rather, how shall I put it, colourful area south of the Great Bridge. From there, an aqueduct leads to the Cathedral Ward. <coughs> Not a place you'd normally want to visit, but I don't imagine you have much of a choice, do you? Hello and welcome to another episode of Lore Bites. I'm Brutus, and today we're talking about Central Yarnum's Dry Docks and Aqueducts. The Dry Docks are one of the most distinctive set pieces in early Yarnum and are packed to the literal rafters with loot, including a corpse holding a brand new weapon. Nearby we have our first encounter with a certain fan favorite NPC. The macabre detail of the hanging bodies isn't given a lot of explanation, although many people have speculated that they are Eileen's former targets. This is supported by the fact that one of these corpses carries the source spear, signifying that they were likely a hunter in life. There's an abundance of non-church hunters in this area as well. I mean, the boss is of course Gascoigne, who we know parted ways with the church at some point, as well as Henrik and the source spear corpse. Not only that, but the sore hunter badge, an emblem of the long abandoned workshop, is discovered on a corpse in an empty tunnel. I don't want to go into it in too much detail right now, but we know that at some point in the past there was a fissure between the workshop and the healing church that eventually led to the workshop's current dilapidated state. This is a topic I want to cover in a future episode, but if we assume that the church forcibly closed the workshop and disbanded its members, perhaps Central Yarnum's aqueducts became a refuge for hunters to carry on with their work without the church's control and supervision. As for the canals themselves, a point of ambiguity remains as to what exact purpose they served. We can infer that they were once flooded at some point in the past, long enough for the rotted corpse enemies to form. These enemies are typically only found in bodies of liquid, they were infected humans once who were either thrown into the water or jumped in themselves. Eventually their long time submerged caused their legs to rot off entirely, leaving them in their current state. We might initially assume that these are Yarnum's sewers, and I don't think that's necessarily untrue. However, the dry docks are obviously some kind of warehouse structure that once supported working boats. These pulley systems allowed cargo to be lifted or lowered onto the water, and many of the large huntsman enemies carry these long poles that might have been used to push boats along the aqueduct floor. FYI, these kinds of boats are known as punts. If we follow the main canal all the way down to the end, we arrive across the valley at the foot of Erden's tomb. At the very end of the dark tunnel with the pig from hell, there's this gaping hole that I'm <laughs> ashamed to admit I I've fallen into more than a few times. In all likelihood, this served as the aqueduct's drainage tunnel, and if there was a mechanism in place, it could potentially be used to flood the canals to varying depths. So, I speculate that in their operational prime, the aqueducts could be flooded with water through a system of pipes that likely also doubled as a sewage system. The water would then flow from the dry docks into the tunnels leading to Erden Chapel. Cargo could be moved from the warehouse to storage units using pulleys, and then onto the boats to be transported along the canals. Like the Great Bridge, they were used mainly as a means of transporting goods between Yarnum and Cathedral Ward. Now, whether these goods were procured legally or not is an entirely different matter. Gilbert describes the area as the colourful side of town, and its slimy textures and serious rat infestation certainly gives it an air of seediness. So while the Great Bridge could have been the path through which Cathedral Ward delivered its healing blood to central Yarnum, the aqueducts might be a secret route to transport goods and people into the ward without the church's regulation. Perhaps we've stumbled across the remnants of an organized crime syndicate or smuggling ring comprised of former hunters fallen on hard times. If so, this makes the area the equivalent of the lower undead burg in Dark Souls, an industrial den of thieves. Then again, Gilbert might just have a distaste for the working class. Stop this nonsense at once. <laughs> And that concludes another episode of Lore Bites. Thank you so much for watching once again. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more. On the next episode, we'll be talking about the crucified blood-starved beast in Old Yarnum.